Master Chef is back, searching for the country's best amateur cook. How long does a pigeon normally take? Until it's cooked. <laughs> I need some spoons, two spoons, please. Bingo. Each round, ten new contestants battle for a place in the quarter-final. I think it's magnificent. Only the strongest will make it through to the final challenges. Can I just say, that's not frightening at all. So clever, so brilliant. That's what it's all about. Great cooks, great food, great endeavour. I've lost some weight, I'm ready to get fat again. These five amateurs all think they've got what it takes to become Master Chef. Cooking is my life's work. I feel, or oh, I know, it's what I was born to do. Everything about ingredients and food just excites me because it's a never-ending journey. If they like my food, I don't think you'll be able to keep a smile off my face. <laughs> But at the end of today's heat, only three will become quarter-finalists. This is your first round. It's your calling card. One dish that tells us what sort of cook you really are. Show us something exciting. Demonstrate some skill. Ladies and gentlemen, one hour and 15 minutes. Let's cook. I'm completely obsessed with cooking. I, um, I think about food constantly, I think about eating constantly. Plan my days around what I'm going to eat, plan my holidays about what I'm going to eat and where. Um, so it, it is just the thing I think about more than anything. <laughs> How did you get into food? My dad's a really good cook. Um, so he does Sunday dinner every single Sunday for my whole of my life. And he, he's a feeder, so he loves feeding people. And I think it just rubbed off a bit on me. And what do you like to cook? Love pies, love my puddings, um, love making any, anything sweet. I've got a proper sweet tooth. Oh, that's good. What, what are you making now? I'm making an, an apple tart. It's going to be spiced with cinnamon and cardamom. I'm making a vanilla creme anglaise. And then I'm doing uh, just an almond praline for a bit of texture. What a lovely idea. As long as the tart pastry is thin and buttery and crisp and the creme anglaise is not curdled and full of vanilla, that's great. But Jen's using brand me apples and they are sharp. The biggest thing that's going to stand out is the flavour. I am big on flavour. I just want for them to not even say it, but facial expression to be like, what is this? Like, this is so good. That that reaction to be shocked in a good way. Noma's got four short ribs, chiso with sadza, and it's just cornmeal, but it's got no flavour at all. And that in itself, I think, is a big risk. She's going to serve all that with cream, mushrooms, and spinach. And at the same time, she also has on her bench a butternut squash, and she's got some carrots fried. Where they're all going, I'm not quite sure. How good a cook are you? I believe I'm excellent and there's room for improvement. You're excellent, but there's room for improvement. Yes, there's always room for so improvement. So not quite excellent. So not quite excellent. <laughs> so good. <laughs> so I'm good, but I'm getting better. I believe I have a gift. Cooking is my gift. So I've come here to be the master of that gift and to develop it and harness it and make it flourish. Twenty-five minutes gone. Surgeons so generally are quite competitive people, even though sometimes we maybe don't admit it. But I think a lot of my friends would probably say that. Why would a surgeon come on MasterChef? Um, I've always enjoyed cooking. It's something that I do to relax. It's kind of de-stress from work, and the, the knife skills are. Translatable, should we say. <laughs> what are you cooking now? Uh, today I'm doing spice poached plums uh, with a sabillon, a ginger twill and a ginger crumble. 
I'm intrigued to see how surgery translates into desserts. That's a very, very British, really British, celebration of plums and ginger, all the lovely things with spice. Exciting, interesting, as long as it's got texture. My family all love cooking. Uh, it gets competitive sometimes. We have to like split out meals and each do a course. Uh, we can't all be cooking at the same time. Jacob, you have got stuff everywhere. Yeah. That bench, this bench, I've never seen a bench that looks like this ever. What is going on? This is how I cook. Um, it's a creative process. What is it you're making? So I'm making uh, like a Tunisian couscous with a vegetable stew that goes with it. Griddled chicken and a roast garlic yogurt. It's the kind of cuisine where you fill the table with lots of different dishes and kind of assemble it yourself. So we'll see how it works. As, so are you going to serve it on lots of different plates? or No, one no, plate? I've gone for... Uh, I've lost it now, but there is one plate somewhere. <laughs> I'm not surprised you've lost it, Jacob. <laughs> Look, I, I love a, a couscous, come tagine, come style of spicy vegetable thing. But right now, I don't think Jacob actually knows what the finished dish is going to look like. You would think he'd come in here with a plan? You have 15 minutes left. More mess than I've seen in the playground. But anyway, it's smelling good. Because of the way I grew up and not really having a, a really great cook in the family that I could learn from, it was down to me. And as such, I've just tried to absorb as much as possible in the time that I've been cooking. Mark, the contrast with your bench and other people's benches like Jacob's is quite, quite startling. It is, isn't it just? Simple is best, maybe. Do you think you know so? What? Yeah, let's focus on a, a few good flavours rather than, than lots. We're going for a, a nice cut of beef there, just fried uh, to about a medium rare, flavoured with garlic and thyme. A horseradish mash. Uh, I'm doing crispy kale, parsnip crisps. And then we're doing a, a sauce of, of marabone and beef stock. What do you want from Master Chef? Uh, I'm getting it already, the experience. Uh, I, I want other people outside of my family to actually try my food and tell me whether I'm any good. Cheers, Mark. Mark, I feel, is making a very bold statement because he's keeping it really classic. The beef's going to be cooked absolutely wonderfully. There's going to be the right amount of horseradish to give punch in that mashed potato. And the sauce, the sauce is the thing that makes it all. It's got to be rich, it's got to be deep, it's got to be dark. Ten minutes left, OK? This isn't going to work. I may start again. The chickpeas didn't cook the first time through, but they're in the pressure cooker again. The other elements are there, I think, unless I've forgotten something or lost something. Yeah, there's not a lot of space, I think. Two minutes. Put whatever's going on a plate on a plate now. Right. Stop. Stop. Broken and my salmon is completely flat. It looks gorgeous. That looks spectacular. I hope it tastes so better than it looks. Kath, put time, please. First up is Surgeon Kath. Her calling card is a dessert of spiced poached plums topped with sabayon, ginger crumble, and a ginger tweel. Your flavour's very good. Spiced plums, there is a hint of ginger in there as well. 
However, the Sabion is not a Sabion. It's not light like a Sabion. It, it's become mousse texture. It's made it a little thick and a little bit too sweet for me. I don't mind the Sabion being that thick at all. A Sabion really can be, you know, a little bit creamy, but plums, Sabion, ginger, crumble and a biscuit. I think that's brilliant. I'm unsure, but John loves it. You wouldn't expect that from a pudding, would you? No. <laughs> I know I could have done it a bit better, but, you know, the, the comments are encouraging. Overall, fairly pleased. Software consultant Mark has served his fillet of beef with horseradish mash, crispy kale and parsnips, and a bone marrow sauce. Your beef is beautifully cooked for me. Absolutely lovely. Lovely and juicy and pink in the middle. And you've got some browning on, on the outside. Too much seasoning on your parsnip crisps for me. It's just like blowing me away with pepper and salt. However, I love the flavours you've created. Your sauce is ace. Thank you. Absolutely ace. Rich with beef and the bone marrow. And you get a little bit sort of buttery because of the bone marrow in the background, which is wonderful. I like your ideas a lot. And I love your bravery of a piece of beef and mashed potato. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens with the rest of them, I suppose, but yeah, I'm, I'm proud of the dish I made. <laughs> Management consultant Jacob has served a stew of chickpeas, carrot, celery and pumpkin, together with chicken flavoured with pomegranate and red pepper paste, with preserved lemon, roast garlic yoghurt, homemade couscous, and a cabbage, sesame and date syrup salad. It's very difficult to get form and shape and presentation when you're putting onto one plate what is normally half a banquet. Mm -hmm. Your chicken is, has got sort of a bitter smokiness, which goes really nice with the rich creaminess of the yolk with the garlic. The spicy sort of vegetable soup, come tagine type affair here is lovely. Really, really addictive and smoky with pepper paste. It's a really interesting plate of food. Really interesting plate of food. There's subtlety where it needs to be. There's real strength and punch where it needs to be. It's like an Aladdin's cave of, of flavour wonders. You could dip in and out wherever you wanted. Plate is messy. On the whole, I'm pleased with how it went. I'm kicking myself a bit for working a bit chaotically and not giving myself enough time at the end. Nutrition student Noma has made beef short ribs with carrots, pepper and chilli on butternut squash puree with creamy spinach, mushroom and courgettes topped with sadza. The flavour on your beef is superb. Thank you. There's a sweet tanginess and then there's heat and smokiness as well. Really good. Your satsa doesn't taste of anything. It's not supposed to. It's purely there as a texture to mop up everything else, a bit like rice. Noma, this is good. Thank you. I like your spinach puree with the mushrooms, but I feel as though the cream spinach doesn't necessarily belong with my short ribs. OK. But the flavour is fantastic. First thing he said, the flavour. I was just like, yes, the flavour, yes. So I think they have now a, a rough idea of what my cooking is about. Last up is mortgage advisor Jen. Her calling card is a cinnamon spiced apple tart with an almond praline and a vanilla creme anglaise. It could be tidied up a little bit. Yes. Your pastry is good, firm, the apples inside are sweet, and we all know apple and cinnamon. It's, it's like a cuddle to me, a cuddle on a plate. You've put sharp Bramley across the top, which is controversial because it's a cooking apple. However, I love the contrast with the sweetness of everything else. There's definitely a cook about you, Jen. Thank you. For me, the issue is about the amount of cinnamon. It's almost medicinal. But great little tart. Yeah, good job.
it didn't go as well as it had when I'd been practicing, but it wasn't all bad feedback. They did have some nice things to say about it, so okay. Great round, I think. Five very different cooks, five very different plates of food. The deal is that we're going to choose our favourite cook, and those two cooks will go straight through to the next round. My favourite dish. Was cooked by Mark. Congratulations, straight through. My favourite dish was cooked by Noma. So, Mark and Noma, thank you very much indeed. You guys can leave us, thank you. I'm not being off, I'm ecstatic. It felt like a weight was lifted off me as soon as my name came up. But really? Is there anyone else called Mark in this? <laughs>I'm quite excited, I like improvisation. I'm going to give myself a lot of time at the end to make the plate look nice, probably do a bit less. So how do you pick yourself up? How do you motivate yourself for the second round? Um, this partridge pheasant, don't even know what it is, but it's quite exciting to cook something different. Um, so guinea fowl. Guinea fowl, yeah, or that. I've got the legs in here, I'm trying to make some sort of ragu. I've got a sage pasta dough in the fridge. I'm not even sure what the dish is going to be in the end yet, but um, we'll, we'll work that out. Where's the fig going? That's a good point. Um, <laughs> I haven't worked that one out yet. <laughs> Things work in sweet and savoury dishes, they absolutely do. However, fig and pasta, that's the problem. Pasta bolognese, pasta ragu, absolutely. Pasta and figs, no. No, 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 no. 25 minutes gone, you've got 35 minutes left. Kath is making us a chocolate and ginger tart. She's served with the ginger cream and a praline. I like Kath's ideas, it's just whether she can execute them. Why did you go for dessert again and not savoury? I know you're a pudding man and I know you didn't think that my dessert was necessarily up to scratch the last time and I wanted to try and prove to you that I can do a good pud. I thought it was good though. I didn't well, think it was good. Hopefully Kat. this will be better than good. You have 20 minutes left. Jen's making his a pear and ginger cake with poached pears, walnuts and a ginger cream. 
She's made the ginger cream from the ginger biscuits, which I think is a lovely idea. The thing is now is that we've got to have a hot cake, and if she puts the ginger cream on top of that, it's going to melt everywhere. I think she's going to have to think about a presentation really fast. Jane, you've gone for puddings again? Yes. Why? Um, so when you announced the challenge, I was convinced I was definitely going to do savoury. And then when I lifted it and it was ginger, I absolutely love ginger. It's one of my favourite things to eat and cook with. And I've had some amazing ginger puddings. So it just, it, it just seemed like I've got to do it. Have you whipped it? I think so. I think so. Yeah. Look at it. You can tell it's overworked. Well, yeah. You got nothing to do some more? I'm going to do some more. Yep. Because of the um, biscuits, I didn't. I couldn't tell until it was till it split. You have just ten minutes. Ten minutes. I'm worried that I got water in the last lot of pasta, so I'm making another lot. I don't know if I'll have time. If I can get it in the pan in the next minute, I'll be happy. You've got two minutes left. Sixty seconds. Put it on the plate, quick. OK, stop. Thank you very much. Well done. Time's up. Jacob chose to cook with the guinea fowl and has made a ravioli stuffed with leg meat served with wilted spinach and sage alongside slices of guinea fowl breast with a fig chutney and a red wine and chocolate sauce. We've got two main courses on here on one, on, on one plate. I like your ravioli with the ragu and the sauce and the spinach and the, the sage. I think it's a nice thing. Uh, then I jump to the other side of the plate and I've got this really sharp, very, very sour, sweet fig tomato chutney with my piece of guinea fowl. Uh, the two don't belong together. Right. It slightly confuses what the dish is. And you put yourself under so much pressure doing it. Um, but you've got skill. At some point, you'd have to give a plate of food and stop giving a banquet at some stage. Could have gone better, could have gone worse. Maybe I tried to do too much. It's just did the two halves come together. Kath went for the sweet option and has made a chocolate and stem ginger tart with spun sugar and a ginger cream. It's a bit um, rough. Yeah. I really like the heat of the ginger in there. I, I like the flavour of your ganache, even though it doesn't, hasn't got the smoothest to finish. I like your pastry. I'm not convinced of the combination of, of chocolate and ginger. As far as flavours go, I think chocolate and ginger works. My issue here, Kath, is, is one of presentation than finesse. It, it just needs to be a little bit smarter. Either fill the, the tart right up to the top and get a hot knife and then run it across the top to give it a sheen. It just needs to be elevated a little bit more. A little depressed that, that Greg didn't particularly like my flavour combinations again. I mean, I think that chocolate and ginger is, is quite a well-recognised combination that works. Um, but hey-ho, he's a judge. Jen also went for a sweet and has served a pear and ginger cake with ginger cream and chopped walnuts, diced poached pears and a ginger syrup. I had planned to cut the cake in half pipe the cream in the middle and then pipe it on top as well, yeah. but it would have melted, so I uh, had to rethink. Because the cake was hot? Yes. I understand. Uh, 
uh, soft, well-made cake, poached pears on the side, walnuts and the cream, I think it's a good thing. It tastes really good to me, really good. I like it. I like it. Again, I'd like it to look better, but I understand why you couldn't decorate a hot cake. I get it. It wasn't perfect. They did have um, things that I can improve on, but overall, I'm pleased with how it went. It's been a good round, a really interesting round. One of you is going to be leaving the competition. We'll have a conversation. We will call you in as soon as we possibly can. Thanks very much indeed. Do you know what the big problem is here? Those three can cook. I think Jen's combinations of ingredients was, was absolutely lovely. I mean, that sponge that she made with the pear inside was, was beautiful. I thought it was a tasty, tasty thing. All of us had good points and bad points. I think it's really hard to judge at the moment, but I, I just hope that I showed enough skill that they think I deserve to go through. I've never seen anybody cook like Jacob. Jacob cooks in a very, very unusual way. He is like a magpie comes around and picks bits up and he puts them all together on one plate. And then trying to think about a fig and tomato sauce with a ravioli. Uh, 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 uh. However, he's got skill, he's very, very creative, he's very, very adventurous. I think when I get the result, I don't know if I'm pleased or not. Um, it's, it's very hard to tell which way it's going to go. Kath is showing good skill, good cookery skill. Be able to make a chocolate ganache, be able to make pastry. You didn't like the chocolate combination with the ginger, I thought it was really, really good. I think that it was just a bit rough and a bit rugged. And I think with an hour an invention test, a tart with some chocolate ganache could be a sexy thing if you want it to be. I'm just beginning to kind of get into my stride, but I am a bit concerned that one, the one going home could be me. In this round, because it's been so strong, it's a bit of a shame we're going to lose one of them. Wow, what a day. What a day. And I'll tell you what, it was as close as that. As close as that. The person leaving us is Kath. Thanks, Kath. It's not like I crashed and burned, you know, I, I didn't have a disaster. There were just people that perhaps showed a little bit more skill. I think it was a fairly close run thing. Oh. <laughs> I really draw it out. <laughs> I have to level with you, this is a big step up. We've invited some guests in to try your food. The first three winners of MasterChef with me and John. Thomasina Myers, Peter Bayliss, Stephen Wallace. Your two courses. First course in one hour, 15 minutes later your dessert. Let's go. Cut yourself. Just elevate your hand. Hold down. Are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. Sure? Yeah. I Let's just get... won't stop bleeding. I want to carry on. Go and have a rest. He's cut himself quite badly, so he's presently just stepped out of the kitchen to try and calm himself down, and hopefully he's going to be OK to continue cooking. Jen's doing a very, very classic menu. A rack of lamb with a minted pea puree, potato fondant and a port sauce. 
and dessert is a chocolate fondant with raspberries. The pitfalls are massive because everybody has an expectation. It's, it, there's just nowhere to hide if I do anything wrong. But I'm hoping that all the practice that I've done is going to pay off and I will do well. Jen, how's Phil V here? It's a bit nerve wracking. Um, I absolutely love Thomasina Myers, so uh, I think I'll get a bit starstruck seeing her. But, you know, they, they've gone through this process, so hopefully, um, you know, they understand what we're going through to try and get everything done in the time that we've got. Naomi, you made a great splash with your short ribs. Yes, uh, thank you. Are we getting a similar style today? No, today's completely different. I want to show you a different side of me. I, I am all about African food and food that I grew up cooking. But today I'm making uh, herb dressed steak with um, potatoes stuffed with wild mushroom like creamy sauce. And uh, for my dessert, I'm making a fruit cake. I never order dessert when I go out, so this is not my strongest point, but I love making muffins. So this is like a muffin mix, just made in a very stylish and pretty version. So I thought, if I try and really push the boat and do something I don't know how to do, I think I'm gonna flop. So I just thought, let me just combine things that I think would taste good. Now when she says fruit cake, it's a banana and a carrot cake with raisins in it, served with a berry coolie. It sounds quite out there. My mind is open. Hey, you all right? I'm all right, thank you. You sure? Yeah, Great right boy, go. well done. Mark's now started cooking his two courses, and I'm really pleased he's here, because it's touch and go whether he actually came back or not. The main course, spaghetti vongole, one of my favourite bowls of spaghetti in the whole wide world. Salty, lovely clams, a hint of chilli, lots and lots of parsley, a little bit of garlic, and the water that you cook the spaghetti in coming together to make the lovely, rich sauce, taking up the flavours of the sink. I love eating it, but where's the skill? Where's the enterprise? Where's the endeavour? The dessert, I have no idea. Disc of biscuits, chantilly cream, some chocolate ganache, a peanut butter caramel sauce, and then lemon verbena. Lemon verbena is a really strong herb. It sounds really interesting. It seems to me that all the work is going into your dessert and that the main course, as beautiful as it may be, is relatively simple in yes. comparison. I, I've got two children with very sweet teeth. Uh, and they love to, to have a good Moorish dessert, and it's a great finish for a dinner. There's all tactical. Yes. I spent all last night sat in my pants on my bed, pretending to make this dish, just trying to work it all round, getting all my timing right, getting all the different aspects in place. I must have looked ridiculous if anyone saw me through the window. So far, I think the judges can see I can work with flavours and can get quite a bit done. I think what I need to show now from the feedback is that I can put a bit less on the plate um, and be a bit more in control. Tell us what you're going to cook for us. So, for the main, I'm making sea bream fillets with cavallo nero, borlotti beans and salsa verde. And then for dessert, I'm doing this kadaif pastry with caramelised peaches, a nectarine pear pomegranate salad, halva, and caramelised pear ice cream. OK, tell us about this pastry. It's the same kind of dough as phyllo, um, but it's made into more of a, like, vermicelli. I don't want to open it now because it'll dry out, but it's, um, it's kind of almost like hair, and it's, often you get baklava made from it. Are you only doing one dish on each plate? Uh, so far, yeah. Jacob's undertaking a huge amount of work. He's full of his own fish. He's cooking the blotty beans properly in a pressure cooker. He's making his own ice cream. He's making his own halva. Sesame seed paste, boiling sugar, mixing the two together, and then he's got to hope it's going to set. It will be miraculous if he gets it finished.
I remember the, the day that they told us you've got the critics coming in. It wasn't, of course, in those days, it wasn't past winners because there, there was only one past winner <laughs> when I did it. But it was all a bit of a scary and frightful business. I think it's a completely misconceived dish from start to finish, I'm sorry to say. I had cooked for lots of people at various times, but never under that kind of pressure. So uh, it'll be tough for them. When I look back, I wasn't organised for this. I didn't really have the thinking down. And I know Charles Campion, Kate Spicer, tore into the food. It was awful. He seems to have devised this dish with rather too much emphasis on Colour. how it looks. I'd expect to see this in a restaurant set up by an ex-hairdresser. I can understand that they'll be nervous because it was, I remember being absolutely petrified. It's tricky. I mean, with food, you can't please everyone all the time. Even if you think your food is great, some people might think there's a clash of flavours. I like the stew, and I like the fact that it's got a good belt of chilli to it, and it's fierce. And I kind of like the mash, mm -hmm. but I would never put the two together. No. It's how you seduce people with how the food looks, how it smells, and then how it tastes. You know, there are multiple challenges you're throwing up at these guys. Better being on this side, isn't it? Yeah, definitely better being on this side. Ah, oh, rack of lamb. Why do they do it? Honestly, I think there's some real technical challenges, getting the crust right, the meat to be cooked perfectly. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> Pom fondant can be hard, quite tricky to get that, you know, really pull off that well. You're doing well. Deep pure, I've got to go. Look at the colour there, look. Beautiful. Come on in. Well done. Thank Listen, you. Well done. Good. Very good. I've made for you a herb crusted rack of lamb, uh, which is served with a pea and mint puree, a pom fondant, and a port jus. I hope you like okay. it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. It actually looks jolly nice. The meat is beautifully cooked. That crust is really beautifully seasoned and brings everything together. Pea puree is delicious. The fondant is well cooked. Um, the only thing that's a bit of a disaster is the, is the sauce. It hasn't had enough time to reduce it and it's a little bit like just wine on a plate, really. But I think it adds some lovely colour and I think it actually works really well. I think she's done an exceptional job. Oh, yeah. It's a nicely cooked dish. And I'm really pleased. I was concerned about it, and I'm really pleased it turned out. OK. Chocolate fondant, I think, historically in MasterChef, has been the nemesis of, of far too many contestants. Get it right, and it's fantastic. Get it wrong, and... Uh... How are the fondants looking? Just, are they going to be all right? I think so. I might just give them 30 seconds, but it's still a bit wet on the top. Come on. Please work. Yes! Go on! Oh, my God. Oh! It's crying out loud. Please don't drop this one. Oh! Sorry, force of habit. That's it, that's it done. Okay, go. I 
I've made a chocolate fondant for you with a raspberry coulis and then just a raspberry ripple cream as well. Thank you. Lovely, thank you. Oh yes. Mm. It's really deep, mm. deep, deep chocolatey flavour, which is what I want. This cream, I think it's very clever. Mm. The, the way that she's put that little ripple through is very, very nice indeed. And it's not over sweet either. Mm. I think she's a real star. I think there's some brilliant mm. cooking here. Mm. Wow, good luck. Lovely. This is the second good dish from young Jen. It is. Mm. That was tough. I've ne I'm never normally that messy, but I left that place in a state. <laughs> I'm just really annoyed at myself for dropping that fondant. But as I said, it meant I could see it was like soft in the middle, so there is a good side. I love a steak. A herb dressed steak feels quite 70s. Creamy mushroom stuffed potatoes feels quite 70s. There's nothing that's really screaming delicious to me. You've got two minutes to get this out, Noma. Yes, I think I'm, I'll be on time. Were you concerned about those steaks? Yes, I wouldn't have them that rare, but <laughs> hopefully they'll be fine. Very nice. Oh, steady. Right, can we go? Yes. Let's go. What's that, mustard and parsley? Yeah. Nice. Come on, let's go, Noma. Lovely, thank you. I've made herb-dressed steak, sirloin steak, served on a bed of warm courgette salad and stuffed potatoes. They're stuffed with wild mushrooms and parsley. Thank you, hope you enjoy it. Thank you. The steak is actually beautifully seared on the outside and it's got lovely tenderness in the middle. Um, it might be a little rare for some people, it isn't for me, I love it. There's some lovely rich flavours, lovely tang that cuts through that meatiness really well. The courgette salad, it's silky, it's soft again, it's full of punchy flavours. And um, the idea of taking a, a, a new potato and stuffing it with creamy mushrooms is really quite inspired. I can't have the creamy mushrooms and the salty parsley, it's a bit confused. What are you talking about? Mushrooms, parsley, cream, they all belong together with the steak. However, why we've got a potato handbag the mushrooms are going into, I'm not quite sure. You've got three minutes, Noma. OK. My mum makes fruit cake for Christmas. It's sort of... Mm. Berry coulis and cream, it's just, it's just a little bit boring, but if it's the best fruit cake we've ever eaten, it would be wonderful. Is that strawberry and blackberry, that coulis? Strawberry and blackberry. Right, cake on. Yeah. Look at that. Lovely looking dish. I've made um, a fruit cake with strawberry and blackberry coulis and chantilly cream. I hope you enjoy it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. It's just rich, it's warming. The sauce is wonderful with it. The colours are amazing. It's just delicious. Mm. It's, it's beautiful. I mean, it's such a lovely use of spices. She's very confident. Mm. I just think it's miraculous to pull that off in such a short space of time. You've got a delicious berry coulis with some nicely whipped sweetened cream. But I think they're actually masking a pretty dull cake. 
you hope that your best was good enough, but that was not even my best, you know, so... Yeah. I'm a mess. Three minutes on your main course, Mark. Mark is doing for us spaghetti vongole with a garlic crumb. Um, got to be an all-time favourite. If he gets that right, it's just going to be a real crab pleaser. Nice plate. Nice plate. All right. Okay, we should be going now, Mark. Right. Let's go! Here we have a, uh, a traditional vongole, which is clams in a spaghetti with chilli, garlic, lemon and parsley. I've made a, uh, a crumb on there as well to add a little bite to it. Bon appetit. Thank you. Thank you very much. My pass is beginning to mm. look dry. Yes. Yeah, mine too. I think the garlic is really overpowering, mm. but I think the balance of the lemon, the herbs is lovely. What it doesn't taste of at all is vongole. I can't taste the clams. So for me, that is a bitter, bitter disappointment. It doesn't demonstrate a lot of skill, but I've got to say, it eats really well. I don't question the quality of the eating of it. What I question is the skill that went into it. Chocolate peanut butter sugar puff cookie. Phew, well that sounds pretty wonderful and it sounds pretty tricky to make. What's in there, Mark? So in here we've got uh, raw jasmine rice that's been toasted. I intend to grind it into a, a really fine powder. I'm loving the textural elements though, it's very playful. This should be really good. You've got one minute. All right, one minute. Are you serving the biscuits in the pan? Yes. Well, I tell you what, that's quirky, mate. Hey! No wonder the kids like it. What about the caramel sauce? The caramel sauce is there, that's just got to go on now. This is a skillet uh, cookie with cream on top. Uh, there's a, a chocolate ganache a peanut butter caramel, and then this toasted uh, jasmine rice, just to give you a sort of nutty buttery finish to it all. Enjoy. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. My instinct is just thinking, I'm not sure I really want to eat that. My cookie is squidgy in the middle, but the caramel is undercooked, it's, it's too sweet. And I just find the ganache it's just detracting, and the cream just looks like it's congealed. I really don't find this at all appealing. <laughs> it's lovely. <laughs> I mean, look, whatever the fella is and whatever he does, he does tasty food. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I actually got through it. Uh, there was a time where I thought, you know what, I've come to the end of this. I've chopped half my body off. This is the end now, but you know what, I've actually got it all together. Jake, you've only got seven minutes before the main course go out. Yeah. Pan-fried sea bream with cavalloniero, bolotti beans and salsa verde. I mean, this just screams delicious Italian food to me. There is nothing about that that I don't want to eat.
Why have you got the saucer in the middle of the plate? Once I've got a plate done, I can go like that and have a clearish circle. I see. Nice idea. Oh! Great. Still got it. That's a nice dish. That's a nice looking dish. Go, 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 go. Well done. Very well done. Afternoon. Hello. Thank you. I've served for you a pan fried fillet of sea bream on a cavallo nero salad with braised bolotti beans and a salsa verde. Enjoy yeah, it. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's elegant, it's restrained, it's modern, it looks really great. I think we should tuck in. Mm. Mm. I actually love the way the fish is cooked. The skin is lovely and crunchy, adds that lovely texture. Bolotti beans, beautiful, succulent, soft, wonderful, wonderful sauce that comes with them. The salsa verde, beautifully made. All on the money, spot on. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. All well seasoned, all well cooked. This is simple Italian food, but this is demonstrating skill. Aye, aye. It's hair for you. Yeah, thank you. Right, that's you out. He's got an halva, he's got peaches that are caramelised. He's got a salad, he's got an ice cream. For me, it all seems a bit kind of jarring. It sounds like such a huge amount of work to do in such a short space of time. You've got five minutes. Enough time? Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. Look at that. Let's go. Well done. Good lad. Thank you. Thank you. So I've made you caramelised white peaches with a yellow peach pear pomegranate salad with halva, caramelised pear ice cream and a kadaifen pistachio nest. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. How original, mm. isn't it? Just. Mm. That's so sublime. This pastry is ethereally kind of thin and buttery and just tastes delicious. All those elements come together and just sing on the tongue. It's, mm. it's a delight, a sheer delight. Mm. I'm amazed by the amount of work. And some of those flavour combinations, sex combinations, are very nice, but it's very different. Although there was a bit of a struggle, um, I think I managed to get the plates out on time, which was a relief. I tried to be a lot tidier, so hopefully the judges might like that. <laughs> I'll tell you what, lots of endeavour, lots of creativity, and I think it was fun. Jen had a pretty fault-free round. On time, rack of lamb, perfectly pink, chocolate fondant, very good. We enjoyed both courses. In my opinion, she goes straight through to quarterfinal. Uh, as for the other three, I think they're all up for debate. I enjoyed Mark's Vongolo, you did as well, but I was just a little bit surprised by the simplicity of it. And the dessert, I think I may be the only person in the building that enjoyed that biscuit. It's just incredible. If I could live this every day, I wouldn't live very long, but I'd love it. I like the flavours on Noma's main course. For me, the steak was undercooked. You were fine with it. I, I would have sent it back. Noma's dessert, a strange combination. I like the sort of fruity flavour of the coolie. It was the banana carrot cake on top, which didn't quite match. I was not in a comfort zone at all. I hope it's good enough. The pair of us have been really impressed by Jacob's ability to do loads of processes and get so much work done. I thought the dessert was a little unusual. Nothing particularly wrong with it. What was impressive from Jacob was the quality of his main course. It would be fantastic to get through to the quarterfinals. 
Let's see what the judges say. <laughs> We have three quarter-final places and one of you is leaving us. Our first quarter-finalist is Jen. Our second quarter-finalist Is Jake. Well done. Our third and final quarter finalist is Nova. Mark, terribly sorry, mate. Thank you so much. Thank Good you. to have met Thanks you, my so friend. Much, Thank you. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough on the day, but somebody's got to go out and I'm just happy I was able to take part. I really am. Master of Quarter Finals is an amazing feeling. I'm so excited. The next round, obviously, I've got to up the game. Um, but I think I can keep going for a good while. I'm happy, I'm so happy, I'm happy, I'm happy and I can't wait uh, to be here and just uh, continue unwrapping my gift and seeing what else I can do. Next time it's the quarter final and Noma, Jacob and Jen will join Juanita, Sarah and Jack to fight for their place cooking for one of the country's top restaurant critics. It's like uh, being on an obstacle course drunk. That gets my wagenous, mate. <laughs> I love it. I love it.